God bless her. God bless her. God bless her. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. How many of you are ready for tonight? My goodness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again, Pastor. Thank you, sir. And I want us to honor Apostle Grace Lubega. Hallelujah. Thank you. Great session. And um, please permit me to break protocol as I honor Pastor Emos Fenwan. Let's give him a big God bless you. Really honor you, sir. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's pray in the spirit for a few minutes. Go ahead and just begin to pray in the spirit. Give us visitations by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, give us visitations by your power. For everyone that asketh, receive it. Hallelujah. I will do your will, do your will, do your will, oh God. I will do your will, do your will, do your will, oh God. Tonight, I come in the volume of the book, it was written about me, to do your will, oh God. Yes, I come in the volume of the book, it was written about me. To do your will, oh God. One more time, I come in the volume. I come in the volume of the book. It was written about me. To do your will, oh God. And I will. I want you to be very sensitive tonight. I began to tell us in the morning that I sense in my heart that tonight will be an outpouring in this place. Do you believe this? And the meaning of that is that when an atmosphere is set like this, it is important that our hearts be receptive. There is always more in Christ. Even when John was in heaven, he said, come up hither and I will show you. Come up hither. I sense a strong anointing already in this place. Strong anointing. I'm going to be charging our hearts, but I just sense that there are people. It's like there is. Ta -da 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 -da. Ta da 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 da
Spirit of the living God, you are the only one who is able to reveal the Christ. You are the only one who is able to impart genuine faith within our spirits. We submit to your wisdom. And tonight, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you will move us to realms beyond our current experiences. Let graces rest afresh. Let vistas be opened in the spirit. Let dimensions be brought forth for us in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, I want you to be seated. Hallelujah. Can you take it low for me so I don't have to shout? I truly believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Word of God. I believe in the potency of His Word. The things that you hear us teach are not cunningly devised fables. There is a difference between something you were taught and something that has become your reality. He says the things which we have seen, the things which we have heard, and even that which our hands have handled of the word of life, this is what we communicate. Hallelujah. And so I like us to be very sensitive in this place and trust God that in addition to all we have received within the minutes that we have, that God will move us deeper I truly believe that there is more. There are dimensions of weight and power of his presence and glory that God desires the saints to host in this season. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And how many of us are ready for it? Blessed be the name of the Lord. I want to just give a charge, just the other side of what I taught yesterday. Like Pastor charged us this morning, I want to encourage us to listen again to the teachings that have come throughout this conference it would be arrogance to believe that everything we heard we have understood at the point we heard them faith comes by hearing and hearing there is a hearing that brings awareness but there is a hearing that brings understanding hallelujah awareness does not produce power it takes understanding conviction is a product of understanding hallelujah hebrews chapter 11 and verse 33 my god i receive i manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see jesus lifted up exalted i receive i manifest and verse 33 the Bible says who through faith subdued kingdoms who through faith wrought righteousness who through faith obtained promises promises can be obtained through faith yesterday we spoke about building testimonials in the spirit a good report this is the other dimension of faith that the saints need to come into an understanding of. And the Bible says promises are obtained through faith. Hallelujah. This is very important. My intent in this charge is to help us understand that the speakings of God over our lives can be made manifest here and now. Let me recap on something that I said at my first session. 
that the end product of the dealings of God with the saints is that we become eventually and experientially a manifestation of the glory of God. This is God's goal, that when the believer begins his walk with God, the intent behind everything God does, his word, his spirit, the buildings, the pruning's, is that at the end of it, we become an experiential manifestation of the glory of God. The apostle calls it living epistles. We become a, a capture of all the multifaceted dimensions of God. Are we together? So the Bible tells us that promises can be obtained. Promises are very important in the life of the believer because the Bible says the manifestation of these promises prove in experience that we are partakers of his divine nature. It says according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Are we together? It says through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. The next verse says whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises that by them by these promises made manifest in our lives, it will be proof indeed that we are partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. That means in the dealings of God, there are two dimensions, and I want you to please pay attention. There is the prophetic dimension of the dealings of God with man, realities that are finished from Christ's perspective. That is the starting point of the believer's journey. But your assignment is to walk in partnership with the Spirit of God and the Word of God to make that which is finished in the Spirit manifest here and now. The Bible says the Word became flesh. It could not dwell among men as the Word in the Spirit. And they could not behold that it was full of grace and truth provided it was in the realm of the Spirit. So the Word became. That technology of becoming, transportation, manifestation is my assignment tonight. How you are able to transport divine realities from the realm where they are finished, yea and amen, to make them manifest in your life. Because the Bible says that the endless expectation of creation awaited the manifestation. Hallelujah. The manifestation of the glory of God is from the word doxazo, a display of the wisdom, a display of the glory of the king. You are a chosen generation, he says, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people, and holy nation that you have been called forth to show, to call, to show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Are we together? So it is important that in my Christian experience and yours, that eventually, that it be captured and made manifest in my life, the promises of God, the commitment of God to the believer. That everything that God has committed himself unto, as far as the believers excelling, captured in this mystery called the Zoe life. You see, the apostle was speaking and he said, this is the record, the testimony, that God has given us eternal life, life everlasting, Zoe. But he says this life was so structured that the riches of that life is released at the instance of knowledge. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 18 says, Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts or their minds. That means an individual in ignorance, even though a believer may never manifest the reality of this Zoe life. And this sadly is the tragedy of many believers. Genuinely saved, but they have not mastered the, the technology of importing divine realities from the realm where it is finished to the realm where it must be made manifest. This is the assignment of faith in this regard. Through faith, they obtained promises. Are we together? Hmm. So Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 becomes a starting point for this brief discussion tonight. Paul is mentoring the church in Ephesus and he begins by teaching them profoundly. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us. Notice the construction. He hath blessed us with all, not some, all spiritual blessings. But they reside in heavenly places and only routed through the office of the Christ. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the definition of grace. All spiritual blessings that reside in the heavenlies only available to the saints through the office of the Christ. 
Are we together now? Yes. All spiritual blessings. The Bible says that God had blessed us already with all spiritual blessings. In manifesting Bible faith, you must have it at the back of your mind that the realities you seek to be made manifest are not about to be created. They are finished. They are real. Their existence is already there. The Bible says he that cometh to God must believe that he exists and then that is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him are we together so you must have it at the back of your mind that everything required for the life and the godliness of the believer is already finished and available in christ hallelujah but then like i told us there are two dimensions the believer has the privilege of manifesting or relating with two realms the realm of the spirit and this physical realm so the things and the realities that are finished in the realm of the spirit as real and as truthful as they are they do the believer no good remaining in the realm of the spirit are we together now this is the realm where our light must shine before men this is the realm where they want to glow. our lives must become manifestations of the glory of god according to ephesians 3 and verse 10 to the intent now that unto principalities and powers might be made known by the church the multifaceted wisdom the manifold wisdom of god hallelujah ephesians 2 10 says we are his workmanship created in christ jesus unto good works which god had before ordained preordained that we should walk in them results are very important for the believers work first as a consolation for your loving and serving jesus but then that becomes the consolation and it becomes the evidence that serving the lord pays in the christian experience of serving the lord you can taste and see that the lord is good not just believe and hope there is experience to our work with god are we together now so the bible says god has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places but it's important for you to understand that your desires and your promises need to be made manifest here and now for your profiting and then to be able to reveal christ in and through you and generally speaking to save time there are three kinds of knowledge you must have to be able to manifest promises and desires i'll just state them then construct the keys that make the promises of god manifest generally speaking there are three kinds three levels of knowledge that all believers must contend for by the word and by the spirit if we desire to see our faith potent enough to obtain promises number one is the knowledge of god himself the first kind of knowledge you need for your excelling is not the knowledge of things it is the knowledge of god the bible says but the people daniel eleven thirty two, 32 that do know their god not just that do know what he can do not just that do know what he has the people that do know their god the bible says they shall be strong capacity number two they shall do exploits not explain exploits do exploits are we together now so the Bible says that it is important that we know God. In fact, the real heritage of the believer is not material things as important as they are. The Bible says, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. It says, let not the rich man glory in his riches. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. The Bible says, but let him that glory and glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. John 17 and verse 3. This is eternal life, that they may know thee, the one true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. So the first dimension of knowledge that all believers need if you must manifest Bible faith is the knowledge of God. And with respect to faith, there are two dimensions of God that you must understand. Number one, his integrity. Number two, his ability. These are the dimensions of God that control conviction. You must know that God is a God of integrity. There are many daring things God will instruct you to do in your life as a believer. And you will draw your confidence from your knowledge of his integrity. The word integrity is from the word integer, sameness, without falsehood. Are we together now? The Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. Men don't lie because they are bad. They lie because they are men. God is not a man. He became a man. But he is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. 
Are we together now? The Bible says by these two immutable things, the oath and the promise, that by these two immutable things, it is impossible for God to lie. Do you understand what I'm teaching you so far? It's important that your faith is anchored on the person, the integrity of God. And then number two, his ability. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 now. Now unto him, the Bible says, who is able to do. I like this. Able to do. There are people who are able to say, but they are not able to do. There are people who are well-intentioned, but they are not able to do. The ability to do is a description of your wherewithal. Able to do. Exceeding. Abundant. The Bible says, far above all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us say God has integrity one more time say God has integrity and then say God is almighty it is true you want to walk in Bible faith you must have a revelation of God's integrity and God's ability because you will stand before many Red Seas. You will stand before many Goliaths. And listen to me sincerely, ladies and gentlemen. It will take the faith of the Son of God at work in you. To see his might beyond the mountains. To see his might beyond the giants. When David stood before Goliath, he saw a reality beyond Goliath. And Goliath was no longer a threat. Are we together? And you know the way God speaks to man. He speaks to man as though he's speaking to himself. When God is speaking to you, he does not speak as though there should be any limitations as far as obeying him is concerned. Because it is his power that will sponsor that word coming to pass. So God will give you audacious instructions and act as if there will not be mountains on the way. Go and build the 10, 20, 30,000 member auditorium for instance and that's the end of it. And he will act as if he kept money somewhere for you. Because he really did. Go to Zarephath, he says. I have commanded a widow. She never acted like she was commanded. Why are you here? And God said, I've commanded her already. And when he met the woman, the woman was about to eat and die. There was nothing that sounded like an instruction came to her. And yet God said, I've commanded her. God is not a man that he should lie. Do you believe this? So the Bible tells us that God has integrity. And watch this. The entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation is a compendium, a manifesto of God's integrity to the end that the saints will believe him. When you study scripture, among the many things you seek to see is God's integrity, walking with men in the storm, walking with men through unfavorable situations the bible says the things that are written are for time they are for our learning so that we through patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope are we together the thing that is is a thing that was there is no challenge to the believer today that is new it's happened before and the bible says time will fail me to talk of gideon jephthah barak men who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness shut the mouth of lions obtained promises you're not the first to desire building the house. You're not the first to be managing a health condition. It's happened before and the integrity of God has been put on display. Even the dead and the grave, even Hades could not stop his integrity from being made manifest. Are we together now? So most people want to walk in Bible faith and um, now I, I say this sincerely. There are many people who may never truly experience the power of God as far as manifesting faith is concerned because their speakings and the things that they do is not derived from the revelation of who God is. The difference between mental ascent, just talking gibberish, and the confession that produces power is that the latter is a derivative of an encounter. You need to know God. Are we together now? Yes. You need to know God. And one of the things that happens to you when you know God is that your perceptions are altered. When you see him in his majesty and in his might, something happens to you. It deflates the mountains and the challenges that are before you. Because when you see him in his power, you can believe him for anything. Shout a loud amen. amen. 
So the first kind of knowledge that you need is the knowledge of God. Can I tell you, there are many believers who do not want to pay the price to build that bank of knowledge. It is important. The God you know is the one you reveal to your world. When God was sending Moses to Pharaoh, Moses, God, Moses said, no, 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 no. God, this is inconsistent with your pattern. You cannot send me to go and represent a God I do not understand. If I meet Pharaoh, who will I tell him has sent me? I do not doubt what you are saying, but who will I tell Pharaoh had sent me? And he said, that's a good question. I am that I am. Let me give you a revelation of myself. And upon that confidence, Moses could dare Pharaoh and he stood coming once and again until that exodus happened. Many of us would need to go back and submit ourselves by the spirit and through the word to learn God afresh, understand the stretch of his integrity and understand how powerful God is. Second knowledge. The second dimension of knowledge you need to manifest Bible faith is the knowledge of the promises that have been made available for you in Christ. The Zoe life manifesting it is highly knowledge dependent. In ignorance, the believer will live a defeated life. In ignorance, the believer will live a defeated life. If knowledge were not important, God would not grant us access to his word. If knowledge were not important, the Holy Spirit will have no ministry in our lives. The Bible says when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Is that true? He's the spirit of revelation. He guides men, guides our understanding. Light is powerful. John 1, 5. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. Arise, he says, shine, for your light has come. Amplified says, arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new light. Hallelujah. This is very important. Most believers live defeated lives because we have not paid the price, number one, to truly know God. Experientially. Hallelujah. And then number two, we are not even aware of the exceeding great and precious promises. I charged us in the morning when we were discussing on prayer. It is important for you to know what is available. This is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has it come into the heart of any man. The things that God has in store, not for everybody, prepared for them that love him. Verse 10 says, but the God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searched all things, the deep things of God. Even those things that have been hidden. And the Bible says, for our glory. Knowledge. What do you know about God? What do you know about victory? What do you know about failure? What do you know about Satan? What do you know about the blessing of the Lord? What do you know about restoration? What do you know about speed? What do you know about prayer? What do you know about fasting? What do you know and believe about demons? What do you know and believe about angels? What do you know and believe about heaven? What do you know and believe about unity? What do you believe about prayer? What do you believe about coming to church? Are we together? It's important to begin to vet, to probe, and to examine your understanding. Stability in this kingdom is a function of knowledge. Experiential knowledge. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, the prophet lamenting by the spirit said, My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge my people they are my people and yet they are destroyed for the lack of knowledge hallelujah make up your mind this year that you are going to contend for superior spiritual information you must begin to vet your understanding are you aware of what is available unto you in christ this is the ministry of the word this is the ministry of the holy spirit hallelujah i can do all things he says you know, um, for many years I studied that scripture and one day God opened my eyes. How does Paul make such a very audacious and arrogant statement? How do you dare say I can do all things? Do you know how many things to be done in your life? And yet he says I can do all things. If he stopped there he will be charged for arrogance. But then he says through Christ. Which strengtheneth me is the word energes. There is an energy that comes from the spirit beyond myself. Are we learning now? The knowledge of God 
and then the knowledge of the promises i taught you in the morning if you recall that oh I, I didn't explain that part that the bible essentially every time you open the bible to study you are interacting with three realms of spiritual realities number one promises promises a compendium of god's commitment to you number two principles that help to educate you and show you the modus operandi of the kingdom number three the prophetic speakings of god both past and future every time you study scripture this is what you are looking at you are interacting with number one i repeat promises exceeding great and precious promises the bible says there are many things that god has said concerning us he says you are the head and not the tail do you believe that he spoke to abraham that in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed and the bible says in galatians chapter 3 and verse 29 he says if ye be christ then are ye abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise that means what he said to abraham he said to abraham and christ jesus and now in him by redemption we have become partakers of his divine nature that includes what he told abraham so you carry a consciousness that you are a blessing are we together now this is very important the bible says when men say there is a casting down for you you will say there is a lifting up it's a consciousness you must believe it let the redeemed of the lord say so let the healed of the lord say so let the blessed of the lord say so the bible says in deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 that in obeying the lord and walking in keeping with his commands you shall be exalted above all the nations say all any nation whatsoever the color of your skin notwithstanding the limitations of your background like gideon notwithstanding it is already god's prophetic speakings it is up to you to know and then to believe you cannot believe in ignorance it starts with knowledge then it translates to believing many believers must submit themselves to superior spiritual knowledge can i give you the third kind of knowledge you need to know if you must manifest bible faith the third kind of knowledge you need to know and this one many believers including those who teach faith with all due respect have not understood it the knowledge of the conditions that are connected to the manifestation of every promise the knowledge of the conditions that are connected to the manifestation of every promise the knowledge of the conditions that are connected to the manifestation of every promise responsible christianity is when you bring the saints to an understanding that the technology that makes anything manifest in the earth is that the spirit and the bride say come it is the union between the spirit and the responsibility of the bride that makes manifest are we together now when Jesus was about to be made manifest as the word incarnate, it took a role from man and then from God. The angel had to come to Mary, sent from God. How shall these things be, she said, seeing that I know not a man. He says, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. And she said, be it unto me. She had to agree to participate with heaven to make that manifest. There are many believers with all due respect claiming things they will never see because there is a responsibility component to faith. Did you hear what I said? There is a responsibility component to faith. They heard the word just like we did, but the word did not profit them, not being mixed with faith. In fact, the Bible calls Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith. That means he's the pattern man as far as God's idea of faith is concerned. So you understudy how Jesus manifested faith and that vetoes how any other person manifested faith. We see the responsibility component of birthing the purposes of God in and through the life of Jesus. Are we together? He said, lo, I come. Um, you know, Paul was making reference to that which was speaking. The Bible says he went to the temple and he opened and found where it was written concerning him. It was not open for him. He opened it himself. He read it and said, this day is this scripture fulfilled. Hallelujah. Every dimension of possibility and reality in the spirit watch this now please it has a responsibility component that it places on the saints now there are many dimensions of grace grace is multifaceted the bible says in second corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8 that god is able to make all grace everybody say all grace say all grace that means grace is dimensional there are certain dimensions of grace that are called enabling grace. God does not do it for you. He empowers you, but the doing comes from you. 
The enablement comes from the spirit. Are we together now? But the action of obedience comes from you. This is very important. So there are many people, for instance, who are sincerely claiming, let me use something that probably has affected many people across Africa. The issue of finances, for instance. Now the truth is that the Bible tells us that he know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor. Second Corinthians 8 and 9. That ye through his poverty might become rich. Most believers know that. Are we together? That the blessing... Is at work in their lives they know that and that is true but they are never able to manifest that reality you know why because there are components in the kingdom that connect there are responsibility components for instance there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty for instance a diligent hand shall be made fat is that true that the man who does not plant will beg in harvest these are components you must piece together it is important that you do not just know God alone. You do not just know the promises. You must understand the conditions that are connected to the manifestation of the promise. When it has to do with walking in the experience of healing, number one, you must believe that your healing is finished in Christ. But number two, you must believe that to walk in the experience of it, there is always the hearing of faith. The healing of the saints in experience or the manifestation of it is always connected to the hearing of faith. Everyone who was healed had to listen and in listening there was an instruction and they were mandated to obey at the point of obedience. You see that now. The miracle manifested. John 2. The wedding in Cana of Galilee. The ten lepers. You know, Peter's mother-in-law and you read it all down to the book of Acts. The hearing of faith connected to the manifestation of healing. Are we learning? So many believers know they've taken out time to know God in a measure. Others have taken out time to just, just know a few provisions that are available for them in Christ. But there are very few believers who are willing to number one even believe in the first place that there is a responsibility component to faith james said show me your faith without works and he says i will show you my faith by my works he says there remained a rest for god's people and the church is labor to enter that rest how do you labor in word and in doctrine and then you are able to derive what you need to do the rich young ruler came and met jesus and he said good master what must i do to be saved you know why jesus commended him because even though salvation from sin is without the works the participation of any man yours is to believe but because the man had a mentality that for anything to happen in my life I must take responsibility and he said good master what must I do to be saved hallelujah you ask pastor by the grace of God we know that this was a great program mighty program and you can see that this is a manifestation of faith but not without the responsibility participation of the saints how about those who woke up in the morning to make this place work you did not sign any paper and convince them that you were coming. They believed God was bringing you, so they took steps of faith to begin to prepare the chairs before your arrival. They didn't wait for you to arrive before they start putting the chairs to say, let's verify. Mo listen, listen. This is the missing link, and this also explains the secret frustration of many people who attempt to walk in faith. They have ignored the knowledge of the conditions. Hallelujah. As a man of God, I believe in the grace of God. I believe in his empowerment. But ladies and gentlemen, like every man of God here seated, there are hours that have gone into the labor of the study of the word. Are we together now? What you see is a display of the grace of God enhanced by diligence and competence and even mastery. You believe what I'm saying? Yes. So there... There is a level of irresponsibility that God wants to take away as far as manifesting faith. Hoping and waiting for God to do everything as far as making it manifest here looks sincere, but it is not accurate. That is not how faith works. From the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain, but that reality could not save man, even though it was finished already. Jesus had to come and walk for 30 years, learning the law, submitting himself through schoolmasters. Are we together now? resisting every temptation that came tempted in all ways yet without sin gave himself willingly 
in fact jesus himself you know i like the bible because it says everything jesus the author and the finisher of your faith he got to a point where he sincerely admitted that this journey was difficult and he's still the author and the finisher of faith is that is it not in your bible if if it be thy will let this cup pass off me he said it but he said nevertheless my desire to see god's purposes come is greater than my need or my pain that is faith faith exalts the word of god above and beyond the situation not necessarily ignoring the reality of the situation are, are, are we learning now this is very important there are many believers today with all due respect they wouldn't have died if they understood the responsibility component of faith while they were trusting God to be healed, knowing that faith is a school, they would have opened up themselves to be attended to medically while building themselves to learn the ways of God. Because the journey of the believer is gradual, it is progressive. There is no embarrassment, we are evolving. The Bible says, as we behold him, we are changed. It's not instant, the experience is gradual. It takes a while to gain mastery in spiritual things. I am an advocate of responsible Christianity not that which dampens god's ability when you become carnally minded you are already defeated because the bible says to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded it says is life and peace i understand that if it must happen god's way in my life i must come with the consciousness that that reality is available in christ but i engage with understanding taking advantage of the word of god the grace of god to engage responsibly are we together so the man who gets up to go and get a job so that he will pay his children's school fees is the one who believes in the children's future not the one who sits down waiting for things to happen that he believed in the children's future and he got up by faith believing and while he's going there he's confessing the blessing of the lord is at work in my life in the name of jesus christ the favor of god is at work in me manifesting me and yet he's taking his cv and he's dropping it regardless the embarrassment and the number of no's that he hears he still continues are we learning this is important There are many times if you understand the conditions that are connected to the things that are ailing you. Do you know the Bible tells us that there are many ways that God brings men into this experience of the Zoe life. One of it is through the advantage of the gifts that he has placed in the body. That no matter the strength of your relationship with God, you will still need the leverage of the gifts. The gifts are men that he gave to men to enhance their becoming in the kingdom. There are many things you can pray and fast about. The answer is hidden in your honor to men. Are we together? That even if you are Paul as Saul and you encounter Jesus, he will still refer you to men after the encounter for the continuity of your growth. So not even an encounter with Jesus will corrupt that pattern. Are we learning faith now? Yes. The knowledge of God, his character, his integrity, the knowledge of the promises of the kingdom. My goodness, my life changed when I came into this understanding. It is important for you to know what is written. It is important for you to know what is written concerning you, concerning your finances, concerning your children. When you know what is written, you can partner with the spirit to enforce it by faith. In ignorance, there is no victory for the believer. In ignorance, there is no victory for the believer. Are we together? We must take responsibility to begin to study scripture and have superior spiritual illumination this is why you must honor every man of god that god places around your life beginning from your pastor you know why because according to jeremiah 3 and verse 15 men and women of god have a unique mandate as pastors after god's heart to feed god's people with knowledge and understanding week after week in this conference now speaker after speaker people have come here dishing out different dimensions of spiritual reality to the end that the saints be established you want to move mountains i hate to be a bearer of bad news but there are certain assumptions in that process that if you don't go out of that mountain will remain there it's true like it has remained for many people time does not move mountains 
Good intention does not move mountains. It is engaging the force of faith with understanding. Faith indeed that moves mountains. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome, you overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome, you overcome. Can I tell you with all humility, there are many dimensions in the spirit that I am walking in the experience of now. I saw them in my visions decades ago, but seeing them as realities, this has been prepared in the aeons of time, in the spirit, it is part of the script for my destiny. But whether I would walk in the experience of it or not was dependent among other factors on the responsibility component of faith. There are many, many people today, it is in their destiny to be great. There are many people in the spirit, they are prophets in the physical. They are weak people moving around in jealousy and envy with no trace of power because they have not come into an understanding that genuine faith demands a responsibility component. When you act in partnership with God, you are not replacing the reality of his finished work. You are partnering with him to birth that reality within your domain. Are we together? Yes. I remember those days when I would have visions of crusades, mighty meetings and healings happening. In the physical, it never happened. I believe what I saw from scripture in partnership with my vision, but it never made manifest. It was never made manifest. And I took the responsibility by faith. Listening, there are two ways to gain the things that God has spoken to you concerning. Number one, you follow them. Is one of the first principles of followership. Follow them. There are some them who through faith and patience. Before you follow them, verify whether there is faith and patience in their journey. If you do not find it, don't follow. Follow them who through faith and patience. That means there are other routes. But the route that leads you to destiny God's way is the route of faith and patience. Then the second is looking unto Jesus. There are two people or two entities you must look unto. One, men who have proven rec uh, track records. And then the second, Jesus himself, the author and the finisher of our faith. I remember studying the materials of Papa Hagen, T.L. Osborne, Charles and Francis Hunter. I devote those materials praying and fasting sincerely. I didn't pray and fast because I was doubting that the healing anointing could, was in my destiny. It is to make it manifest. So for every time I was laboring in the spirit, there was a record in the spirit that I was manifesting faith, believing God. Today, some of those things that we saw by God's grace are now made manifest. And yet there are many others that are yet to manifest. So we must continue walking by the same rule. And eventually, because God is not a man that he should lie. And can I tell you with all due respect, there were many people who saw the same things we saw. But they made blind faith assumptions that it will happen anyway. Until today, they are the lower levels of life in pain. It will never work when you believe it is all up to God. No, the cheapest of everything we have received in Christ is salvation. And even at that, you still have a responsibility to confess the Lordship of Jesus. As simple as that is, there are people in hell today because they ignored it. It will always demand action of obedience. Is someone learning now? If there is one final component I give you before we wrap up tonight, I hope God has spoken to someone. There is one missing component again to our faith equation that many believers have not paid attention to is called the staying power there are times you have done everything the only thing left is thanksgiving and patience are we together let me just give us that my time is up and then we will pray thanksgiving and patience this is very important romans chapter 4 and verse 20 the bible speaks to us about abraham who is one of the principal portraits of faith as revealed in scripture please give it to us romans 4 the bible says he staggered not at the promise of god through unbelief but was strong in faith how did he prove that he was strong in faith giving glory 
giving thanks how do you prove that you are strong in faith giving thanks even when you have not seen it lord i thank you i give you praise because this is still my reality in the midst of everything around negating your report i choose to believe your report and i give you thanks there are many of us you've done everything right what you need to do now is just to give thanks you wake up in the morning you give thanks in the midst of the confusion you give thanks you give thanks because you believe hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15 says so after he had waited patiently the he being Abraham the Bible says he patiently endured are you seeing it there Abraham the personification of God's idea of faith the Bible says he patiently endured he obtained the promise between God said and it manifested it's many times it would demand patience it's called the patience of faith when a woman takes in, no matter how healthy she is, she will not give birth the next day. Except it's a miracle that God chooses to do by his divine power. Are we together? But the natural cause of things is that when she takes in, she's aware of the fact that she's taking in, but the next assignment is to patiently endure. Patiently endure. It will change her mood, she will patiently endure. Many things in her life will have to shift, she will have to adapt to many things within that period, but she will patiently endure. There is a time allocated for that baby to be matured in her womb, and she has to wait. And when it is that time, she will give birth with honor. There are times it can happen before, it can happen after. But the most important thing is that she will patiently endure. I'm speaking to someone as I wrap up. There are many of you here, you are in a realm where you just need to patiently endure. You have given. You are diligent. You are building a track record. I refer you to my teaching yesterday. After the report is established, after the testimonial is in place, I assure you God is faithful and it will come. And can I tell you, is the period of manifesting faith that takes time. The arrival of the promise sometimes can happen overnight. So Joseph patiently endured. Watch this now, I'm wrapping up. Having had the dream, I saw the sun, the moon, and 11 stars bowing. After that kind of powerful dream, you would think the answer will come next week. If I were Joseph, I probably would be preparing for the throne by next week. My goodness. Many decades later, from that dream, the next place he went to was the pit. The next place he went to was Potiphar's house. And you would think things were already getting better. Potiphar's wife now came with her trouble. Where did it land him? Prison again. And yet, his joy... He would laugh and also watch the countenance of others in the prison. A night before his lifting, he never knew his season had come to an end. And my Bible says the king sent for Joseph. God himself, the one who governs times and seasons. The Bible says he makes all things beautiful in its time. Not his time, its time. There are things in life that have a timing to them. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The faith that moves mountains is derived from number one, your knowledge of God. Number two, your knowledge of the promises, God's commitment towards you. And then number three, the knowledge of the conditions. It is only when you understand the conditions that you can obey. You cannot obey in ignorance. Are we together? Yes. Knowledge precedes obedience. The obedience of faith. At the point where your obedience is complete, then all that is left is patience and thanksgiving. Those we celebrate today in the church, the fathers of faith across the globe, the fathers of faith within this nation, mighty men and women in business, captains of industry, when they are honest with you and you listen to their stories, you will find this pattern consistent. Number one, God altered their belief. They had to understand something and believe a reality that it is finished. Even for those who are not believers, they had to believe in themselves instinctively to believe that that possibility exists in their destiny. They would tell you right from when I was a small child, I knew I was going to be great. And there was nothing else they would be told that they would believe otherwise. And from that standpoint, they began to journey with God. You are in this place right now and God is giving you an opportunity let me plead for two minutes since i'm not able to pray for the sick let me request for two minutes from pastor i just feel stirred in my heart to make an altar call hallelujah i know that we've had moments probably tomorrow would we'll take the time to just pray for the sick but i feel very stirred in my heart that someone in this place 
needs to begin that journey with Jesus. So many people outside, several others falling across television, online. This is first about an encounter with Jesus. If you have a car without Jesus, your life is still at a risk. You are healthy without Jesus. Everyone Jesus healed still died. Everyone who ate the bread that Jesus multiplied still died. There is only one person who is called the resurrection and the life. Jesus himself. Hallelujah. I want to give someone an opportunity right now. You are listening to me. Preachers have come. Preachers have ministered. Bringing several dimensions of reality in this conference. But right now, I want you to mean business with Jesus and to begin an intentional journey. And wherever you are, I'm going to count one to five. If that is fine, I will request for as many who are able to come right in front here. But once the front is filled up and occupied, then I will please request for the remaining people to just move to their LEDs or you can stand right where you are. I'm going to count one to five. You don't have to come, but you should come because Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. I'll begin to count one to five. I want you to win that war finally. Leave your seat and come and stand right here at Wolfbeck 2024. I begin my counting now. One, let's celebrate them as they come. Run to Jesus. Run to Jesus. Run to Jesus. He is able to give you a new beginning. The Bible calls him the author and the finisher of our faith. Subscribing to a life of victory. Please don't kneel, stand so there can be space for others. Covenant Nation, are we celebrating salvation? Let's encourage them as they come, very quickly. Encourage them as they come, young and old, male, female, come to Jesus. He is able to give you a new beginning. Greater than healing. Greater than deliverance, the ultimate deliverance it is. Greater than prosperity. He calls us to know him, the author and the finisher of our faith. This is the most profitable encounter that any believer can have. Come, we have a few seconds for you. If you're coming, please run and join them. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. Is there room for me? Absolutely, make your way to Jesus. You can have the assurance of salvation tonight. From faith to faith, the righteousness of God is revealed. From faith to faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those outside, they can walk to their LED screens and just stand there. I'm sure that some ushers or counselors will be there. Ladies and gentlemen, please look at me. I salute every one of you for the courage to come out here to make your declaration for Jesus. It is the wisest decision that any man can make in this side of God's kingdom. Thank you. Now, very quickly, may I please request that you lift your hand high above your head as a sign of surrender. And please, I want you to say this after me with the consciousness that Jesus is here, revealing his love, revealing his power. You're not just reciting a poem after a preacher. This is a supernatural declaration that translates to your receiving the life of God. Are you ready now? Say after me, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I am a child of God, the righteousness of God in Christ, a recipient of eternal life. I go from glory to glory and grace to grace. Amen. Keep your beautiful hands lifted. Father, thank you. Because the Bible declares that as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. I thank you for these, our brothers and sisters, and the many who are making this declaration online, whether from the U.S., from Canada, somewhere in Africa, somewhere in Nigeria. As I'm praying for these ones here, make sure you connect by faith. You are receiving Jesus. You are making this noble declaration. It begins your journey to a victorious life indeed. Father, I pray that in blessing you bless these ones, that you impart upon them the measure of faith that begins to culture them to a victorious life. I bless you by the authority of scripture. I declare your sins forgiven and I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. From tonight, you go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name we pray. 
All right, just a little instruction. There are counselors waving their hands to my left. That will be your right. Please let me request all of you in concert as we celebrate them. Please follow the counselors and they will have a word with you very quickly. Let's honor them. Let's honor them. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's honor them. Hallelujah. Now, thank you. Um, just, just a moment. Let me lend my voice with Pastor to challenge everyone. Whatever sacrifice you can make to be here tomorrow morning, um, by God's grace, the balance of that which God intends tomorrow, I trust that he's going to be releasing graces according to Ephesians 3 and verse 2. There are graces that he gives his vessels for the sake of the saints. And so make whatever sacrifice by the grace of God and those who are connecting by television and online, I'm sure that there's room for you to be part of this. Make sure that your heart is open to receive and receive Hallelujah. the fullness of that which God has in store. Tomorrow morning it is. May Why is that by saying you. Happy New Year? May the Lord honor you. Go from faith to faith Amen. in Jesus' name. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Thank you very much, Pastor Poji, for this opportunity. Please, let's give him a big, big God bless you alongside his dear wife. Um, my salutations to every man and every woman of God here. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Let's lift our hands in one minute and cry again for wisdom. Let's cry that the Lord would speak to us in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, for everyone that asketh, receiveth. Is someone praying? Ask him to give you an encounter by his word. The Bible says they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. Yes, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh, forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Sing it one more time. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. the living God we pray that you will speak to our hearts edify us maximally in this session and to Jesus be all the glory amen and amen please be seated please be seated thank you again for this opportunity um, I want to request that you please lend me your attention I want to share something that the Lord placed in my heart that I truly believe will help and add to our understanding as far as the workings of faith is concerned in this kingdom we rise upon the strength of the light that we have hallelujah and the bible says god called the light day and the darkness he called night and so day in the spirit is not the chronological passage of time but when your light comes hallelujah yeah he called the light day and the darkness he called night. And the Bible says weeping endures for as long as it is night. But joy comes with the morning. So I want us to pay attention. We're exploring in this conference faith in its entirety. When I saw the theme, I was really very encouraged. Because I think that many believers understand instinctively the subject of faith and its relevance to the believer's life. But most people... And even those who have been raised by those who preach faith have not really understood the entire dimensions of faith that are responsible for the holistic development and the victory of the believer. And I trust that all through the sessions in this conference that God will add line upon line, precept upon precept until we have a thorough understanding of the workings of faith. So are you ready this afternoon? 
I'm teaching on a subject that I titled the other side of faith please write it down and please listen the other side of faith the other side of faith the Bible is full of other sides when you read I think that's Mark 4 35 Jesus said let us go to the other side there is always the other side to everything and if you do not understand the other side of faith you will not be standing on a very strong foundation hallelujah now let me begin this session by establishing a few things and please lend me your attention number one I wrote here that the end of the believers journey with God please listen the end of the believers journey with God is that you eventually become a manifestation of the glory of God this is God's goal at the back of his dealing with all believers regardless your assignment regardless your background the moment you begin to journey with God this is the intent at the back of his mind not just heaven are we together not just victory over Satan as it were but God's goal for every believer is that eventually in your Christian experience you become a holistic capture of the glory of God in Romans chapter 8 when we read from verse 18 and 19 the Bible says Paul is speaking now for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time he says are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us the next verse says for the earnest expectation of creation awaited the manifestation of the sons of God are we together now so the Bible tells us that there is a dimension of God's glory that God seeks to be revealed in a believer in fact the apostle coins it beautifully he calls us living epistles that means our lives should be an explanation of the multifaceted dimensions of God Ephesians 2 and verse 10 says we are his workmanship are we still together created in Christ Jesus he says unto good works which God had uh, before time a uh, time it's a preordination God is not just inventing it hoping uh, you know that he would make our lives become that he was at the back of his mind at the point of our creation so every believer must have this that your life eventually should become a manifestation of the glory of God so regardless where God finds you when he begins that journey with you as a believer you must sustain this orientation that regardless my life whether it carries any capture of glory and grace or not that as I begin to walk with God the end product of God's dealing with me are we together is that my life will eventually when you know this it will sustain the staying power it will give you the ability to continue even when you don't understand what God is doing are we together now yes when you drive say from here to the farthest part in Lagos for over 99 percent of your journey you do not see your destination but the awareness that it is there it motivates you to continue are we learning already so most believers are at a loss as to what God is doing with them exactly they just know instinctively he's making a prophet out of me he's making an apostle he's making a businessman I tell you that is that is not enough motivation as far as the challenges you will have to overcome to become you need to know that God's goal for me and you in Christ is that we eventually become a manifestation of the glory of God Galatians 1 24 must become our testimony eventually and they glorified God in me are we learning already this is the first point I need to establish so regardless what you are going through whether you understand your work with God currently or not you must have this at the back of your mind that the end of every believers journey is that you and I become experientially a manifestation of the glory of God I like the way Paul puts it teaching the Ephesians the church in Ephesus in Ephesians I believe chapter 3 and verse 10 he says to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the ecclesia the church the manifold multifaceted wisdom of God hallelujah the glory of God is a holistic capture of everything that makes God God his wisdom his power his favor every dimension every component in God that makes him desired 
that makes him admirable that makes him worthy of our worship he intends that it be imported and be made manifest in the life of the believer that means eventually your life should become a sign and a wonder it is true this is not just something you claim it is something you become is the end product of a journey that your life becomes a fearful wonder first to you and then to creation this is how God is glorified John 17 and verse 1 he lifted his voice to heaven Jesus is praying now and he said father the hour has come he says glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee John chapter 15 and verse 8 herein is our father glorified when ye bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples verse 16 of the same chapter says you have not chosen me he says but i have chosen you and ordained you you know what it means to ordain to legitimize your operation i have ordained you and legitimized you to go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit will remain god's goal for you and i in christ is that we become eventually an experiential manifestation of the glory of god hallelujah you must have this at the back of your mind the second point that i want to establish very quickly is that our work with god and our exploits in the kingdom listen carefully will always demand partnership with the realm of the spirit our work with god and our exploits in this kingdom will always demand our partnership with the realm of the spirit the structure for manifestation is that the spirit and the bride say come not the bride alone not the spirit alone it is the union of the spirit and the bride that can say come healing comes when the spirit says come and the bride also says come everything that happens on earth is a union between the spirit and the bride so if the spirit is saying come if the spirit is saying be lifted is the spirit is saying advance and the bride does not sustain the intelligence to walk in partnership that may never manifest are we together now at every point in your christian life there will be a demand for partnership with the realm of the spirit jesus began to teach us this in what we have come to know as the lord's prayer he says when you pray pray in this manner not just by this recitation in this manner our father he says then he says which art in heaven immediately he tells you that he resides in a domain that is beyond physical so you will need another technology to be able to make that connection he is not physical like flesh and blood which art in heaven are we together now that means any discussion between you and god will demand your awareness of the realm of the spirit then in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3, we'll go there shortly. The Bible says, through faith we understand. We were not there, but through faith we understand that the walls were framed. They had their material expression by the word of God. So that the things which are seen, this is how the spirit operates, were not made of the things which do appear. John 1 and verse 3. The Bible says all things were made by him and without him, that means outside of partnership with him, the word was not anything made that was made. Are we together? So you must understand that your entire journey, this has nothing to do with whether you are a man of God in ministry or a businessman, a career person, a family person. The moment you come into this life, this kingdom life, the demand is that you must consistently walk in partnership with the realm of the spirit in fact james put it beautifully in chapter 2 and verse 26 he says he was teaching on faith and works and he borrowed an interesting phenomenon and he says for as the body without the spirit is dead so faith without works is dead also that means anytime you see a material frame there is a spirit component that sustains it if your business only has a body it will die there has to be a spirit sustaining it are we together now this was what david understood when he stood before goliath he said you are a body that is powered by a covenant i come to you he says you come to me with your spheres but i come to you in a name this material frame is not what will fight you there is a backing from the spirit this is what he was telling goliath it would be stupid for a young boy to stand before that beast veterans of war were running away from him and here comes a very young teenager 
your Christian experience will always demand partnership with the realm of the spirit. This is what necessitates the understanding of the subject of faith. Are we together now? So four times in the Bible, scripture says that just shall live by faith. You find that first in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 4. Please write for reference. Hebrews 2 and verse 4. Then Romans 1 17. Then Galatians 3 11. Finally, we find that in Hebrews 10 38. Habakkuk chapter 2. My apologies. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4. Did I say Habakkuk? Yeah. Romans 1 17. Galatians 3 11. Hebrews 10 38. All of these together. They speak the same language that the just in Christ, whoever is in Christ, will live by faith. Now let's talk about faith. Are you ready? Hebrews 11. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews 11. You see why church is a beautiful place? There are things you only get in church. I was glad when he said unto me, they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Hebrews chapter 11. This we have known and believed to be about the most concise capture of the subject of faith. Let's look at verse 1. Please lend me your attention. This is truly where my teaching starts. It says, now faith is the substance of things. Everybody say things. Please one more time, say things. The substance of things hoped for. Then it says the evidence of things not seen. One more time, say things. So verse 1 carries an idea that faith has to do with things. Are we together? The common expression there is that faith is the substance, the tangibility of the things that we hope for. Then it calls it the evidence of the things. So faith has to do with things, number one. This dimension is not new and strange to the average believer. We understand that faith gives a man capacity to obtain things. Are we together? But I want to introduce to you another dimension, and this is why I call it the other side of faith. Let's read verse 2 together. If you're a Christian, let's shout verse 2 together. Ready? One, to read. For by it. One more time, please. What did the elders obtain? A good report so the Bible tells us that number one faith is required to deal with the matter of things but that there is a dimension to faith that many believers do not understand it does not deliver things it delivers a testimonial a good report it says all the elders in Hebrew in Hebrews 11 they obtained a good report so from scripture here, number one, we see that faith has two assignments. Please pay attention. Number one, the first assignment of faith is to deliver desires and deliver promises that are consistent with the will of God. The first assignment of faith as revealed here is as a platform that delivers desired expectations, that delivers promises. But this is not the only assignment of faith. In God's economy, the most superior assignment of faith, listen carefully, is a platform for obtaining good report. What is good report? A testimonial before God. I looked up that word testimony or testimonial, and let me read for you what I found, then we continue. Is God speaking to someone already? A testimonial is defined as a written declaration certifying to a person's character, conduct, or qualification. I take it again. A testimonial is a written declaration certifying to a person's character, a person's conduct, or a person's qualification from which recommendations are made. That means the basis for promotion, the basis for increase is when you examine a man's testimonial. Are we together? In corporate life, you don't promote people emotionally and arbitrarily. No, there is a record 
Are we together? A record of service, a record. It is the recommendation whether to leave that person at that level or promote him to a higher realm is at the basis of examining his testimonial. And the Bible says the assignment of faith is to print out your testimonial, what you will present before God and life that necessitates your rising, necessitates your advancement. And the Bible says with that faith, all the elders obtain good reports. Hallelujah. That means everywhere we study faith in the Bible, you must look out for these two things. Number one, desires and expectations obtained, but number two, reports and testimonials established. If your perspective of faith is only about receiving things and desired expectations, there is a side of God you will never experience and there is a side of grace you will never touch. Are we together now? Now, the average believer's understanding of faith is just with respect to things. And you are right. It is only that you are incomplete. That's why verse 1 starts by telling us that now faith is, are we still together? The substance of things and the evidence of things. One more time. The substance of things and the evidence of things. And things are very important. Mark eleven twenty four. Jesus was teaching and he says, What things soever ye desire. He says, When ye pray, believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them. So there is a place for obtaining promises. Scripture calls them exceeding great and precious promises. He says that by them we might be the partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Through faith, many obtain promises in scripture. But that faith, true faith, Bible faith, is not limited to just obtaining things. There is a higher and more superior assignment of faith. We, by faith, obtain good reports. Are we still together? Now, let's look at Hebrews 11. My God. Verse 4. The Bible then, to buttress this understanding... It lists for us five people, among others. In fact, many of them. But the first five, I want to examine the first five personalities in the Bible that he calls elders. You will find out that none of them necessarily received any promise, but they all receive reports. Because you will be learning that there are some times in your journey where the promise is not yet in view. And because of that, the devil will make you believe you are not walking by faith. Yet there is a report. The whole journey is building a track record. Go to verse 4. Let's hurry up for sake of time. I'm just starting my session now. It says by faith. The first elder that the Bible now begins to teach us faith using his life is the man Abel. It says, by faith, Abel offered unto God. Are we still together? A more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness, a testimonial. What was his testimonial? That he was righteous. That is it. He didn't obtain things, but there was a testimony before God that he was righteous, willing to give everything to honor God. And the Bible still calls it faith. This is the number one personality that the Bible uses. So you need to understand the mind of God in discussing faith. Are you ready for number two? Number two is called Noah. Please give it to us. Verse five. Let's hurry up. Media, let's work together. Verse five. Still Hebrews 11 and verse five. Okay, Enoch, my apologies. The Bible says, by faith, Enoch was translated. Remember, he's telling us elders now that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. Read the remaining part, please. For before his translation, verse 5 now, just keep verse 5 media. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. This was his report. Hmm. <laughs> Second individual, no mention of things, but there was a testimony. Are you ready for number six? Verse, go to verse seven. The third person, I believe, the man Noah. Are you ready for Noah now? So we have looked at number one, Abel. Number two, Enoch. Number three, by faith again. Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet. The Bible says he was moved with reverence reverence he prepared an ark 
to the saving of his house by which he condemned the world and became an heir of righteousness by faith. That was his testimony, that he reverenced God. He took God seriously. When God spoke, he did not join the mockers to mock him. Are you ready for number four? Hmm. Let's go to verse 11. The fourth personality that the, in that order is the man Abraham that we know and call the father of faith. Let's go to verse 11. 11, 11, Hebrews. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go into a place, watch this now, which he should after receive for an inheritance, the Bible says he obeyed. And he went out not knowing where he was going to go. That's verse 8, huh? Jump to verse 11, please. Jump to verse 11. Thank you. Through faith. No, no, no. Hebrews 11 and 11. Thank you. Through faith, he says, Sarah also received strength. Watch this. To conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past her age. What was her report? She judged him faithful that had promised. Is someone learning now? So can you see that the Bible tells us that these elders, do you know that not all of them obtain promises? You want me to show you in the Bible? The Bible talks about women who died, who called their dead back to life, and others rejected willingly the promise for a better resurrection. There were those who had the power to receive deliverance, but they chose report more than things. They said in God's economy, having a testimony before God is greater than just obtaining things. And they had the power to be delivered, but they say will not be delivered. And yet the Bible called all of them elders. Are we learning now? Because you see, <laughs> the character of faith is this. Watch this. The testimony of knowing and trusting God through the journey is more superior to the desires obtained in the journey. The testimony, your becoming with God is greater than your receiving. Both of them are important and needed for your overall excelling. But in order of spiritual priority, the testimony of your trusting God, the testimony of your becoming, that spiritual evolution is of greater value in the spirit than obtaining things. Are we together? Any faith journey I wrote here should leave you knowing and trusting God better even more than the results you obtain. So if all you show me in your walk with God are the physical materials that come by engaging the word, I will congratulate you, but I will tell you there is a side of God you do not yet know. Hmm. Are we learning? So Bible faith, therefore, is a combination of reports and promises obtained, not promises alone. Bible faith is a combination of a testimonial before God and then the promises that come. Are we together? There is faith as a school. There is faith as a journey that helps you know God in his various dimensions. And the Bible says it gives you a noble report. Second Timothy 1 and verse 12 the apostle was speaking and he says, I know whom I have believed. I know whom I have believed. I didn't just believe him. I know whom I have believed. You can try to walk out and believe who you do not know. Jesus was rebuking the woman at the well and he said, you worship you what you do not know. So you can have all of the activities of religion happening and yet you do not know him. Remember in Athens, they were bowing down and wrote an inscription to an unknown God. He says, I know whom I have believed. Are we still together? He says, and I am persuaded. Please go back to 2 Timothy. That he is able to keep that which is committed unto him. The end point of this journey of faith with God. When you obtain that testimonial, it plants conviction. That conviction is the raw material that brings promises. Are we together now? Yes. 
See, when you meet people who just mechanically believe God, you see the difficulty in trying to receive, the embarrassment, their ego is on the line. They are hoping the word does not fail them. There is no testimony yet. They are just trying to obtain as proof that they met God. But a man that has a testimony with God is not embarrassed whether results come or not because he has obtained a nobler path. And can I tell you, for such people, results always happen eventually. Do you believe what you're hearing? Listen, the Bible lets us know that faith, on one hand, let me repeat again for your understanding, is a platform a spiritual platform that converts spiritual realities. Remember what Paul said, that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. I have other sessions who deal with the dynamics of obtaining promises. But to start my session tonight, it's important that we bring this other side of faith. Because there are many people you've been trusting God, as you call it, for many promises to be made manifest. And if they say those who have faith, stand up, you may feel embarrassed because you do not have any physical evidence. But I'm telling you that faith does not stop at things. There is a report you have in the spirit. I don't have a job yet, but my prayer life has grown, trusting God. I don't have a job yet, but God kept me through 2023 not knowing everyone. There is, there is all the names of God you see were products of experiences. They did not just name him arbitrarily. No. There was an experience that produced the knowledge of Rafa and Jaira and Sikenu. God has not stopped being named. Your entire spiritual journey should give God a name. That should be your gift to a generation. That in my walk with God, I have come to learn him. So you can stand like the psalmist and say, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid of? He says, the Lord is the strength of my life. This is conviction. Conviction. Because there are many believers who are being discouraged. There are people post-COVID. There are many believers who are trying to recover. I trusted God and yet this person died. I trusted God and this person battled cancer. And you know, sometimes we just cover it up quietly in church and we say, well, God is faithful. But there are many believers about to leave the things of God because it does not make sense. The reason is because we have given a definition that only ends at obtaining things. I am bringing a dimension for you. Like Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Listen. This is what gives stability to the believer's experience. So people will ask you and say, why do you rejoice? No house yet, no car yet. And you tell them, the things have not come. But there is a testimony of faithfulness through the storm. There is a testimony of singing in the midst of the storm. This one is called faith. Hallelujah. Listen, Job had things, but Job did not have a testimony. And Satan told God, based on what we read in scripture, he said, he's only serving you because of things. And God said, you can take the things. Let the man get the testimony. Let the man get the testimony. Let things go away. But let the testimony remain. And the wife of Job said, why do you still hold on to your integrity? Curse God and die. And Job said, all the days of my appointed time, there were no things. His body was not healed. But there was a testimony. Hear me? And then in Job chapter 42 and verse 10, the Bible says, and God restored. Things will always happen when the track record is established. Remember, I defined for you a testimonial as a credential that is, is a concise capture of your integrity, your character, your trustworthiness. That is the basis for your being recommended. Can I tell you, there are many of you, I have always read the story of Mary. Gabriel comes to Mary and says, you are highly favored. I do not see our definition of favor happen for once in the life of Mary. Because everything that surrounded her life after that announcement was controversy and trouble. So, I don't understand, Gabriel. You came from the presence of God. And you tell a woman she's highly favored. And the next thing is one trouble after the other. 
you will be learning that for you to truly be a champion in the spirit, you must have both crowns and scars. Listen, the difference between Jesus and the 24 elders, all of them have crowns, but only one has a scar on his hand. When you get to heaven and you are searching for those with crowns, Matthias have crowns, elders have crowns, many have crowns, but search for the one whose scar is a testimony of love that he had the option of calling 10,000 angels, yet because of his love. So when the Bible says, for God so loved the world, it was not a statement, it's a report card. My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands. My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands. Go ahead, bless his name. Yes, Listen to me. There are times, Abraham, your faith is focused on giving birth to Isaac. Whereas God is focused on changing you from Abraham to Abraham. The whole journey of faith of Abraham. He just wanted to see Isaac manifest. Yet God's interest was making him Abraham. Not Abraham. Sarai to Sarah. Saul to Paul. Cephas to Peter. Every time God met men, his interest was them before their conditions. Because a transformed you cannot remain in the same condition that met your old self. Do you believe what you are hearing? I'm teaching you authentic Bible faith that makes you a champion in this kingdom. So you can laugh through storms. And when those who do not ask, they don't, they don't love God, they ask you questions. But you just lost your father. Why are you dancing and rejoicing? But it looked like, you, I mean, your office just packed up. Where is your God? The next time they ask you, tell them while things are on their way coming, there is a report, an accreditation in the spirit. Who is God speaking to? Hmm. Now I've given you an answer, and an answer you have been desiring. What answer do I give men when they say, where is your God? Tell them the problem is your understanding. Don't miss any session. I will be teaching you what we call results in the kingdom. Because you see, everything we call results in the kingdom is with respect to the will of God beyond your desire. We are going to examine the subject of results. <laughs> are we together? So there are some of you, while heaven is clapping for you already, a champion is imagining the spirit. You are busy saying, God, but the car has not come. And God says, you mean the five years training is just to give you a car? No, oh, come on. No, come on. Hallelujah. You've forgotten the discipline of prayer that situation brought for you. That it was on account of it. I know the man eventually died. But how about the three hours prayer every night? Now that the person is gone, it has become a habit in you. You can't undo it again. That is a track record in the spirit. How about your diligence? A heightened level of consecration you came into. Although, listen, the reason most of you do not know why sometimes God keeps quiet regardless what you are going through. It's not that he's irresponsible. He has found your confusion as a healthy tool that leads you to his presence. He will prefer to leave you there until you get there. As he trains you, he will give you a higher perspective. And he's not afraid of time passing because he can restore. He's not afraid of things living because he can restore. Listen. All through the time, 
that Job went through his tragedy, God never spoke until chapter 38. And when God shows up, you would think he would comfort Job and say, Job, I understand. He said, who is this that darkened counsel without knowledge? This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Are you taking a minute or two to absorb this reality as an imprint upon your spirit? Hallelujah. Listen to me. I hope you know that Jacob's frustration in the Bible, watch this now. In chapter 28 of Genesis, the Bible says Jacob came to a place called Luz. And he lay there to sleep. And then the Bible tells us, watch this, that he saw a ladder that, as, that went to the heavens and angels ascending and descending. He was not transformed with that encounter because all he was looking for was things. The next thing that will happen to Job's life was his tragedy in the house of Laban. And Laban began to manipulate him against the indices of things. But by the time we get to Genesis chapter 32, the Bible says for him to receive an encounter, he had to dismiss things. Cows go away. Wives go away. When he was alone. No things. God said, you are ready for a report now. And he came to him. And in all of that encounter, there was nothing about things. He said, what is your name? Oh, it bless me, oh. And God says, let me show you how we bless in the kingdom. We give you credibility in the spirit. Hear me. Let me speak to a man of God here. You, ministry may not look like it is working, but there is credibility you are establishing in the spirit. This is what the Bible means when it says, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. He, they are not known in the spirit because they have. They are known in the spirit because of what they have become. There is a register in the spirit where the rankings of men are recorded. This is what translates to authority within the cosmos. You don't just tell people be healed just because you saw it in scripture. Believe me, you'll be disappointed. There is a level of stature that is established in the spirit on account of your becoming. Let no man trouble me, he said, for I bear in my body. There is a record that I've served God in the midst of pain. Take it high for me. Is God speaking to someone? For by it, the elders obtain. There are many elders that did not obtain anything in terms of promises. The Bible still asks them. There were others who were brought back to life, but there were others who refused. They rejected deliverance. And the Bible still called all of them elders. The one thing all of them had was faith. Then in verse 37, it says, Time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. It says, Men who through faith subdued kingdoms were getting there, shut the mouths of lions, wrought righteousness, obtained promises. But then it does not stop there. Verse 34. It says, quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, works valiant in fight, turn to flight the armies of the aliens. 35, women who received their dead back to life and others were tortured. Watch this, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain. So they still obtain something. The Bible calls it a good report. Hallelujah. Do you know how the anointing, how olive is made? You carry the olive and then in the squeezing and in that pressing, they will keep going round and pressing it. When you sympathize with the condition of the olive, oil will never come. 
there are many the human spirit never truly yields itself voluntarily no there are situations that compel you yours is to give God permission to have access to that making process So while the devil is mocking you and saying your life is not rising, no job, no money, you are broke, and your entire six hours prayer is full of a determination to force things to manifest, God is saying things will come. They will so come, but not to this version of you. You are the one I want to change. I, I will change you to a version that cars will not stop coming to. And that is when before you call, he will answer. He will give the hidden as an inheritance for you. Do you believe what I'm saying? Man of God, there is a version of you that members have been sent to come to. Not this version. No. Not the weak and the lazy version. Not the competitive and the jealous version. No. So while you pray and say, Lord, bring increase. He now says, go for seven days fasting. And at the end of it, you are disappointed because you think in that instruction, he will tell you the strategy for church growth. And you will never hear anything about church growth. Your disappointment becomes part of the raw materials for your making. Now you understand that the Bible says, for we know that all things, all, with the mastery of a chef, God is able to make all things. Your pain, your disappointment, they all become ingredients to produce something that is presented to the nations as a trophy. We call it glory. The glory of God in and through your life. Can I tell you? Show me any man in scripture, in modern history, and in the church today who is a champion of faith. If the only thing you see is promises, run away. Run away. When you listen to great men, you don't listen just about the promises. The promises are flashy, but the report is why the promises remain. Are we together? If we ask Pastor Poju now to tell us the story of his journey, of this church and his journey with God, you are going to find many points in the history of this church where certain promises, when the promises don't come, they are on their way. Sometimes they are not delayed by demons. They are delayed by the laxity in your transition. This is why it's important you manage your prayer about God destroying enemies. Because maybe you will be learning in the course of this conference who an enemy of God is. An enemy of God is not someone you hate. No. An enemy of God is anyone who becomes a consistent interruption to the manifestation of his will. Even if it is Jonah. <laughs> the jealousy of God fights anything that takes his place and interrupts his purposes even if it is something he gave that is why in the realm of the spirit promises don't amount to much not that they are they are inconsequential they are needed but your track record your testimonial in the spirit my dear sister please hear me whilst you are trusting God to give you a job in Lagos whilst you are trusting God to manifest certain things I want you to not disrespect the health in your prayer that has come as a result of that. The health in your word study life. Somebody told you, oh come, I will sleep with you and give you a job. And you refuse. And now you are feeling stupid for refusing. Because there are many people who are just conscious of things. And they are saying, what is there? And you are saying, but God. After refusing, when, when Joseph refused, uh, what's the name of that woman? Potiphar's wife. You would expect God to just intervene and reward him immediately. Do you know how many years he spent in the prison? For refusing. That was his track record. You see the pattern now.
There are many times believers think just because of standing for righteousness, certain promises manifest immediately. They will come, but you will celebrate their coming when you change. That is when you see the beauty of the manifestation. Can I tell you, there are many people's Christian lives today who have become defeated because promises were manifested to the wrong versions of them. The version that received the one billion was not a consecrated version. The version, there are certain temptations you have no business going through if God grants you grace to change. So there are times you are saying, God, just give me this one billion. And God says, it is in your destiny to have it. But you don't know the temptations that come into the realm of a one billion owner. You don't have the stamina to survive the attacks. Lord, promote me to this office and he says it's in your journey. So you may go to the place of prayer and promotion is at your mind. It is not wrong, but you will find out that God's interest is not the promotion. And the, the more you yield to that becoming, the faster the promises come. Listen, for many years I studied why a lot of people have balloon results. Today you are up, tomorrow you disappear. The reason is because most people do not understand the power of this heritage of a spiritual testimonial. I will sing, I will praise, even in my darkest time, through the sorrow and the pain. I will sing and I will praise I lift my hands to honor you Because your word is true Listen I lift my hands to honor you Because your word is true Sing it I lift my hands to honor you Because your word is true I lift my hands to honor you because your word is true, I will see. Can I tell you, Satan becomes utterly frustrated over a life that values reports beyond things. Because the basis of lust is things. The basis of the excelling of temptations over men is their passion for things. James said, from whence cometh this thing among you? Does it not come from the lust of your heart? He said, ye desire and you have not. When a man focuses on becoming, you have mastered the art of frustrating Satan. Becoming. Because he knows that having it or not having it will not affect your prayer life. Having it or not having it will not affect your word life. Having it or not having it will not affect your coming to church. If the car is not there, you will trek with honor and rejoice while you are on your way to church. And nobody will know while you are celebrating. The day you give testimonies, men will say, by your behavior, there was nothing that showed that there was these ups and downs. And you will tell them it's because I have learned that the most superior dimension to faith is my spiritual evolution. But can I tell you, for everyone who remained alive in scripture, who contended for a good report, eventually promises came without end. I like the way the book of Job concludes. It says, and Job, God turned the captivity of Job. Give us please, as I wrap up, 42 and verse 10. And Job, God turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. He got to a point where he said, do you know what? I trust God. I'm no longer the issue. God, just keep, take responsibility over what you are doing. Let me focus on my friends because I want them to also have that transition that I'm having. Let me intercede for them. There was a dimension of God Job only knew through the storms and through the pain. And the Bible says, let's finish it so that you will see that God is faithful. He does not scam people. He's not a fraudster. His word can be depended upon. It's just the dynamics of his operation that many people do not know. Mm, he said, rejoice not over me, my enemies. This is what gives believers the staying power. So that the day they call you and say the promotion has come, you say, all right, I will respond to you. I'm in church walking. And they say, where is your excitement? They say, no, I had it since. My growth is more important than that. Do you believe this? Yeah. 
let's finish that scripture I have to wrap up I have about three minutes left the Bible says also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before twice verse 11 how did it come there came unto him all his brethren and all his sisters so he had brethren and sisters where did they suddenly go to during the time of his travail and the Bible says all they who had been of his acquaintance before and they did eat bread and bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. I'm sure you have a better spiritual understanding to that expression. The Bible says and every man, watch this, gave him a piece of money. So his money was already in the hands of men. The things you are praying for are not in heaven. Believe me, they are already in the hands of men because the earth has he given to the sons of men and the earth is still full there are four elements of dominion according to psalm 24 number one is the earth number two is the fullness the resources there number three is the mindset that governs the cosmos number four are the inhabitants when god wants to give a man true dominion he connects you to have authority across these four areas the earth land the resources that are in the earth as for the earth, out of it comes bread, he says. The increase of the earth is for all. That even the king is fed by that which comes from the field. You don't find money in heaven. You don't find all of that. They all reside within the cosmos. Your promotion is here already. Listen, when the Bible says all things are yours, I want you to believe it. The delay in its arrival is not necessarily you're not understanding God. That's not the only reason, but the major reason for most believers is that God's interest is not just to give you things. You see, when you are really inclined in the realm of the spirit, you will see that things do not have so much value. Satan was willing to give everything to Jesus if he would just bow down. He showed him the glories of the world. Is that in your Bible? And said, all these things have been given. All these things have been given. Just bow have a report that you've worshipped me since you are the express image of God. Let me have it that you are that weak and you have acknowledged my superiority and things can go. This is the system of negotiation. When Satan comes to men, do you know how men lose their souls? The Bible says, what shall it profit a man if you would gain the whole world and lose your soul? The question is, there is a relationship between gaining the cosmos and losing your soul. Gaining in the cosmos is transactional. It will always be at the expense of your soul. You can know a man who has been blessed by God because he prospers even as his soul prospers. This is the one thing you cannot have with Satan. The moment you prosper by Satan, the focus is on your getting things. That's what made men, it makes men rich fools. You now understand the problem of the rich fool? He had things. But no track record. He said, my soul, find rest on things. And God said, this is a foolish man. So when God wants to walk with you, the first thing is not to give you a car and a house. Don't think that I hate cars and houses. So I hate poverty more than you. So don't think that I'm talking with some kind of, no. But I want to show you a more excellent way. Because when you understand faith, there is a grace that gravitates things to you. I want you to believe this. There was an anointing when Noah had a, a, a track record with God. There was an anointing that came upon the ark. All the animals, without being called, they began to come by themselves. This is the reason why the lives of many people look mysterious. From nowhere, someone will stand up and hold your hand in ministry and say, I will help you and I will support you. And you are wondering, where is this coming from? It is because once there is that track record in the spirit, then you will understand the dynamics. So all that we have learned, as far as obtaining promises are concerned, they are valid and powerful and true, consistent with the operation of the kingdom. But I'm showing you another layer to it. Not a replacement, but an addition. A more superior addition. That in the economy of God, before we now deal with the matters of confession and the rest, I will teach you all those dimensions in addition to all that you have learned. But that at the back of all your manifesting what you call faith, there is a settled understanding that it is not the result that controls my knowledge of God's faithfulness. No. Can we pray? Please rise. 
I will hold on through the storm And I will hold on to your body My life will soon reveal You're the lifter of men The lifter of men In one minute my time is up I want you to pray And say Lord I contend for a testimony in the spirit A testimony of my love for you a testimony of my honor for you regardless what happens around my life I believe you for the best as declared by your word you are not a man that you should lie nor the son of man that you should repent but I add to my faith experience today the other side of faith building testimonials in the spirit that I love you